down, you can rest on your feet. Let's give God some praise and honor. Let's, let's say something sweet to our daddy. God, we love you. God, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We're so excited to be here. Someone shout out Jesus. You're so amazing, God. You're an amazing, God. You're holy, God. You're holy, God. You're holy, God. You are worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're a faithful God. Does anyone know him to be faithful? Does anyone know him to be righteous? And does anyone know him to be good? We praise you, Father. We praise you, God. We praise you, Father. We give you glory. We bow down. We bow down, Father God. Hallelujah. Let your anointing be in this place. Let your anointing fall, God. Let your anointing fall, oh God. Fall fresh. Fall fresh. Fall fresh today, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he won't stop yes, God. for you. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey. Lord, we thank you for this day. Hallelujah. For giving us grace, Jesus. Oh. We give you praise, God. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready. Whatever you want to do, your presence, your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, we want you, Lord, like never, like before. never before. Your presence, your presence yes. is, an open, is an open door. So come. Let's say in every season, yes. In every season, your grace has been enough. Grace has been enough. And now I'm believing. And now I'm believing. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The cross before. Before. My hope of things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Yes. Your presence. And it's by our faith, Lord Jesus, we see a miracle. Oh, said, I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. And my God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Let's tell me, sing it. Said, I know. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, by faith I see a miracle. I yes. see a miracle. Said, my God. Promise. Made me a promise, and it won't 
Say your presence. Your presence is an open door. Is an open door. We want you, Lord. We want you, Lord. Like never like before. Like never before. Your presence. Your presence is an open is an open door. So come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. Like never like before. Never so come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. Like never, like before. never before. So come now, Lord. So come Lord, now, we need your presence. Lord. Like never like before. Never we need before. it, Lord Jesus. So come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. Like never, like before. never before. So come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. we need a breakthrough. Like never like before. Never so come now, Lord. So come now, Lord. Like never like before. Never My son. Before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you need a breakthrough, go ahead and give him a praise. Oh, oh. His presence is an open door. We worship you. And we want you, Lord, like never before. Hallelujah. Come now, come Lord, Lord, like never before. Come the door is open. Come now. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise Hallelujah. and glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you, Lord, like never before. We want you, Lord, like never before. Hallelujah. This past Wednesday, my mother-in-law passed, and the song says, your presence is an open door. Right before she passed, the elder of a church came. He prayed over her. And he said, the gates of heaven are open. The gates of heaven are open. And less than five minutes after that, she went to Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, my presence is an open door. She said, I want you, Lord, like never before. She said, come now, Lord, like never before. And he said, my door is open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for it be, to be an open door. Hallelujah, Jesus.
The Lord wants to just pour out his anointing. Whatever you're praying and asking God for, pour out your hands and receive your blessings to God by faith. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe by faith. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I receive it. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. And I know he lives because I'm living proof. I'm a walking, talking miracle. Because Jesus saved me. Something marvelous happened to me. I was a prisoner. Your love broke me.
Spirit saying obedience. Yes. Some of us we're not moving or progressing because we're not obeying God's word. 
we're lacking obedience in all things. We're like, when you obey 10% of the time, God is wanting your obedience and commitment and faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, yeah. You're good.
I'm his own. Then I am your own. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. Then I am your own. Even when we don't do what we want God to do. I am your own. He's still chasing after us and chasing after us. I am your own. children very engaged and busy here at the church, please bring them out to the Rainbow Party. On March 25th is Teen Game Day at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here at the church. Um, if you would like, if you have young people um, that are the ages of 12 to 17, um, please bring them out. If you want them to get more involved, we do have a youth day where they go out during the service. And I believe, uh, is Brother Craig Dixon here? Well, he's over the youth, and Sister Trinity Brown, um, they are over the youth department. On March 26th is our baby dedication. If you have a young one, a baby, that you would like to dedicate to the Lord, we ask that you see Sister Smith, Shantae Smith. Raise your hand. She's right here in the back. Please sit, see, uh, see her. April 2nd is Palm Sunday. Everyone say Palm Sunday. All right. So um, we will be having a Palm Sunday potluck. If you're familiar, we normally do that at the park. I'm sure there will be more information to follow. And April 30th is Baptism Day. If you have not been baptized, we ask that you um, see who do they need to be, uh, see Pastor Roger. Give him your name, and we will make sure that you are baptized. 
If you've recently been saved and you have dedicated your life to God, this is the one with one of the ways that we uh, we show our dedication to Him. Take going down into the water and coming back up, so, uh, that solidifies our salvation. All right. So if you'd like to be baptized, or if you have been baptized for many years, you just want to re-get to the water. Sometimes we need another double dip. I probably do, Lord Jesus. But um, we're going to have baptism Sunday. Okay, before I start talking too much, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, the offering. Praise God, praise God. How we doing, Family Fellowship? How many can testify that God keeps his promises? Oh, somebody didn't hear that. How many can testify that God keeps his promises? But God made a promise back at the dedication of the temple. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now you say, what in the world does that have to do with offering? Well, let me remind you something. I got here back to California and... 2020, this place was a desert. I'm going to just tell it like it is. It was a desert. Riverbeds dry. All the hills had evidence of fire. Many times driving back and forth between Ventura and Bakersfield and passing mountains, and I'm seeing evidence of fire, dry dust. One Wednesday night, we were coming up so Rosemary could do worship rehearsal. We had to turn around and go back because there was a huge fire. But somebody has been calling out for California. Because I go back and forth now, all I see is green. Somebody has been calling out for California, and just like God promised, I look around now, I see green. I see everything living. I see riverbeds that were dry, overflowing with water. I see life where before there was death. God keeps his promises. God says, test me. And see if I won't open up a window of heaven and pour out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive it. Now, when God asks for something, God has already given it to you. God heard, rains came. Some of us have been praying and asking for jobs, asking for opportunities, and God showed up and said, here you go. God loves a cheerful giver. We should be celebrating the greenery. We should be celebrating the life. Because if it's dry in the spring and winter time, it's going to be terrible in the summertime. But God has given us a reprieve. So how can we participate by giving back to God's kingdom? There are four ways to give. Number one, you have envelopes on the back of your chair. That's my favorite method because I get to touch my offering and pray over it before I give it back to God. I get to say a personal thank you with my hands on it. Thank you for putting this into my hands. So please accept it from me. You can text to give the electronic version. Uh, you can go to the Family uh, Fellowship website and give by that means or the church center app. But however God pl places on your heart to do it, just do it, remembering that God keeps his promises. Father God, we come before you right now with great hearts to give you a thank you. Thank you, first of all, for allowing us to walk in your divine health and healing. Father God, we are all well today. Thank you that you are close to the brokenhearted. You have turned grieving into testimony. Only you could do that. Father God, we thank you that every time we cry out to you, you show up in a mighty way. So at this time, we give back to you a portion of what you've given to us. And Father God, as the man of God get ready to come and break the bread of life today, Father God, let your anointing flow over and through him, transform his tongue into a mighty sword that will cut between truth and lie and separate evil from good. But let him edify us today, Father God. And we will continue to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. many of us know God has never lost a battle. Hallelujah. When we give our problems to him and allow him to fight our battles yes, for us. Yes, Lord. We win. Let's continue in the worship. The spirit of
of the Lord is here. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. And right now, I know you're able. My God, come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things. But fail, cause you never. never fail us. He's always there. Oh, everything, everything's possible by the power, by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Breaking my heart of stone, taking over like a cherry cold. My walls, my walls are all Oh, you never lost the dog. Oh, you never 
ourselves None, nobody likes losing in here <laughs> I'm gonna tell you I'm, I'm pretty competitive 
I don't like to lose in Uno. I don't like to lose in Monopoly. I don't like to lose getting water in a line. I want to be first. But I want to tell you something that in this life we will experience some losses. But I want to encourage you today that as long as you got Jesus on your side, you will never lose a battle. Hallelujah. Say, I know you won't lose. I know you won't lose. I know you won't lose. Come on. Can we go back to that part? You can do all things to that top and say, You can do all things. Hallelujah. You can do all things, but fail. Because you never lost a battle. Hallelujah. You never lost a battle. And I know, and I know, you never will. Come on. God, we thank you. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. Because you do not lose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You never fail. You never lost a battle. So, Father God, we thank you for this day that, Lord, that you have blessed us to have. Lord, you bless us to receive it, Father. God, we thank you for every single thing that you have done for us everywhere that we have been God hallelujah is because that you have allowed us you have blessed us and God I I just want to ask today Lord as your word goes forth God this word that you have given me God I pray right now that it will touch every heart of every woman and every man and every child that is in here God I pray Lord that hearts are turned that minds are renewed hallelujah that they will leave better for coming in the name of Jesus and Lord as I pray every single week we know that the enemy will try to steal the seed God but we pray right now by the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. I pray, God, Lord, that this word, this seed goes out and falls on good ground. God, hallelujah, we bind the work of the enemy that may try to steal this seed, God, in the name of Jesus. Because we will leave better. We will leave better. Because with you, Father God, all we do is win. All we do is win. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the worship team a hand, the band. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, saints. Good morning, family. Hey, if this is your first time, my name is Pastor Roger. I'm the lead pastor here at Family Fellowship. I just want to thank you for coming. I say this every week because it is important that you know how thankful we are here at Family Fellowship that you came to fellowship with us today, especially to our online audience, those that are watching far and wide. Thank you because you could have streamed anywhere else, but you chose to allow your thumbs to settle on this YouTube or Facebook stream. I don't think we do an Instagram today, but we do all three. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to get into this word, and I'm going to be honest with you. You know, there are times that, you know, as, you know, men or women who bring the gospel, you pray, you ask God, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people? And there are times that the Lord gives you a curveball and a message. And I'm going to be a little bit different today. I'm going to do a little bit more contextual teaching in the word um, than I normally do. But I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me because this is a message that I, the people of God need to hear. Amen. Now, when you are sitting in here and, you know, this morning when you looked at yourself 
in the mirror, you, whether you were brushing your teeth or doing your hair or washing your face. I hope you did all three of those in Jesus' name. But regardless, I'm glad that you're here. And, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, there is a resemblance that we all have. And that is to your mother and father. Each and every single one of us, we resemble our mother and our father. And, you know, not only do we resemble them, we do some of the things that they used to do. Some of us, I can remember times that I said, I would never I'm never going to do this. How many of you, do I have a witness about that? You never said that you was going to do that same thing. When I have my kids, when I get my house, when I get on my own, I'm never going to do that. Mm-mm. And here, mo- here we are today, whether it, it is your parents or your grandparents that uh, raised you, influenced you in, the, in, uh, in, in, your, in your younger years, here you are implementing those same things. You know, I find myself, uh, you know, yelling at my kids like my dad used to do. I'm not talking about yelling, but he just always talked loud. You know, it's just like, hey, get over here, boy. And so I find myself doing things like my dad used to do or, or sometimes even, you know, uh, mixing up the names. Even though I got two kids like my mom does, you know, she will call every single child until she get to the right one. I'm like, she's like, Ronnie, Rosemary, Regina. I'm like, okay, you're just going through roll call right now. I'll wait. <laughs> Present. But sometimes, you know, and, and those, these are the things that we need to, to know and how much of an impact our parents have had on our lives. And today, you know, I, I want to get straight into a text. Let's go ahead and go to Genesis, the first chapter the 26th verse, and we're going to read 26 through 31. And the reason why I brought up that story, because we are all in here, um, God's uh, creation. Amen. And those of us who are, 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 have received his son, we are all his children. And it was, I brought this up just so in the beginning so that we would know, you know, uh, the, the things that we share with those who have brought us into this world. And we know that God is the creator of all living things. So there is some things that when the Lord had gave me this, this word that I wanted to kind of exegete to go through this text. And so this is uh, for those of us who have never heard the creation story. This is what it says here when it, in, in regards to the creation of man. Verse 1, it says, then God said, let us make in, let us make what? In our image and after our what? I'm going to read that again. It says, then God said, let us make man in our what? And after our? And it says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps over the earth. Look at what God did for you. And then he says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male uh, and female, he created what? And then not only did God create us, this is, he blesses, it says, and God blessed them. And God said to them, he says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and what? Fill the earth and subdue it. And he says, and have, which, which is synonymous to dominion, but to take charge of it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the, of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on earth. And it says, and God says to man, he says, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth. He says, every tree with seed in its fruit. He says, you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and every kind of bird er, uh, of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given uh, every green plant for food. And he says, and it was so. And God saw that he had uh, and God saw that he had made 
uh, no, excuse me. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. It was very good. And it says, and there was the evening, and there was the morning, the sixth day. I want to talk to you from a topic. Everybody repeat after me and say, image, image. and likeness. His image, his likeness. So one of the things that we have to understand, when God created man in the beginning, we, he was cre- we were created in his image and his likeness. A lot of times when you read, the, read this, uh, we use these as synonymous, but when I was going through the text and doing a little bit of study, the Lord led me to look up the Hebrew words for both of these words. Because I believe, you know, one of the things that I love about Bible study, I love looking into the words of Scripture and seeing, going down the tunnel and see where they lead. So this is what it says. That the Hebrew word for image, everybody repeat after me, is salim. Salim. And this means visual appearance of something or someone. Being in the image of God means that humans share... This is us after the fall. It says, though imperfectly and finitely in communica- communicationable attributes. What this means is that we have, you know, a life like him, personality, uh, truth, wisdom, love. We share his holiness and justice. And it says, and so we have the capacity for spiritual fellowship with him. So when God created man, Adam and Eve, we had the ability to think like God, to love like God, to share in spiritual fellowship with him. This is what the image part meant when it meant God created him in his image and his likeness, the spiritual attributes of God. His spirit is what produced this image in man. Now, when I thought about it, I said, okay, I thought about uh, also, the, the word likeness, his image and likeness, like, Lord, well, okay, I understand that it was your spirit that produced man's image, but what about this word likeness in the Hebrew word, everybody says, daimut. Okay, and what this means is character or nature between two persons. And what this means is, so he says, when God gave them, uh, created them in his image and likeness, he gave them dominion in the earth. So when it talks about this word likeness, the Hebrew word mute means God, we have a God-given ability to be able to create. God gave us the ability to be able to create and to have dominion. So when we see this word in its image, which refers to his spiritual character and his likeness, these are the things that God created in man in the beginning. Perfection. But if we read a little bit further, we know that something happened. There's something that happened. And man, when Adam ate of the tree that God told him not to eat, there was the fall of man. And when Adam sinned, he and Eve, they spiritually, they died. And they no longer, they bore the image of God. They no longer bore his image, which they lost the spiritual fellowship with God. You know, because they spiritually were dead. His wisdom, his love, his truth, his holiness was no longer a part of their lives. The Bible says the day that they ate of their fruit, their eyes were open. They began to see something different that God, that God had created them to see. Listen, I want you to understand, although man no longer bore the image of God, he still carried his likeness. And this is what I want you to see here. Man still had dominion in the earth. Man still had the dominion over the animals. Listen, listen, and the ability to create in in reason. So although we no longer looked like God, we, we still had the likeness of God to be able to create and reason. Are you following me today? Listen, man with God's likeness, we can call it tools, has the ability to create. However, no matter what he creates will no longer resemble its creator. 
So when, when man, when Adam sinned, what happened is since we no longer had the image of God, the spirit of God, we could not love like God. We could not, all of these things, we were spiritually dead, but we had the ability to create. And I want to I give you this, I want to break this down to you. So most of you know here uh, that I, I, I work for AT&T, and I used to be a technician manager. I used to take techs out into the field, and I would train them on how to climb poles. You know, I would train them on how to um, run lines in the attic, under the house, how to do the job right. And I, I remember when I first got promoted to management, I, I, I had some technicians. They were young, and I got them out. I was so proud of them, y'all. They went out, and I was teaching them how to do everything right. I was with them. I was looking at their work, and I was like, you're doing it just like I taught you. Have you ever did that before? You took somebody out, and you trained them. You showed them the ropes, and while you was there, they was performing and doing everything that you taught them. But let me tell you what happened. The moment that he got separated from me, and I went to go check on his work, I didn't even, it didn't even resemble the work that I taught him. My proximity... My proximity to him kept him in line. It showed him what, I, what, what quality work was. But the moment that I left his presence, he began to do on his own because he had the ability to do the job the way he wanted it to. And so when I would show up to the job and I'm like, hey, man, I didn't, the line ain't even stapled to the house. It's hanging on. I'm like, I, I didn't, what are you doing? I, didn't, I, I never told you to do this. I'm showing you something. The tech had the right tools to do the job, but since I wasn't there, presence, he did it his own way. Are you following me? This is the same thing that is happening in the world today because, uh, because bearing God's image involves presence. And without the presence of God in your life, although you have the likeness of God to be able to create, you will do it your own way because you will do what you feel is best. And so you will love the way that you think is good enough. You will, you, you, you will treat people the way that you think that they, you know, maybe is good enough for you. you. You will look at life the way that you think that is good enough for you. But I want you to know that as man's problem, we have the likeness but without the image. And so we are living in a world that is full of creativity but out of purpose. Living in a world that is full of creativity, our minds. Listen, we got some creative minds. I remember, anybody remember Blackberry? Yeah, the phone Blackberry. Some of y'all like, ah, millennials, you don't know what it is. Or maybe you've seen it. And I remember, you know, I mean, where your phone actually had buttons. And when that actually came out, you know, because I had a Nokia and I used to play that game Snake. Ooh, that game, that was like, there wasn't no app store, that's what you played, Snake, and you wanted to see how long that that snake could get. But I remember when the iPhone came out, and people were, I actually got the very first iPhone. This is two weeks in a row I'm talking about iPhone. Anyways, and I remember people, my friends were like, man, that thing is going to break. It's completely made of glass. The world was like, wow, we can't believe that there's something that just came out with no, it, no buttons on the screen. Every single thing is touch. I, I'm telling you this because it lets us know the creative mind of man. This is something that God has given us, the ability to create. Listen, I, I want you to see something here. And this is, let's go to, go to Genesis 32. I want you to see this today. And as I was saying, however, even with this, this likeness, without image, our only thing that we create will never truly reflect who God is. And I want you to see something. This is, uh, I believe, what did I say? Yeah, Genesis, the 32nd chapter. I need to wear my glasses a little bit more. Forgive me for that. And so God had delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. They made it through the Red Sea, and they're on their way to Cana. And God 
gives the children of Israel, uh, he, he tells Moses, he says, I, I'm going to bring you out. And this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, when Moses, I said, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, up. Make us gods who shall go before us. I'm going to pause right there because as the children of Israel were on their way to Canaan, Moses was the voice of God. And God was leading them. We know the story, uh, a, a cloud by day and a, and a pillar of fi fire by night. He was leading the children of Israel. And what happens is when Moses uh, goes up to meet God and the children of Israel are left by themselves, minus the presence, we see what happens here. And then he says, as for this Moses... This man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him because Moses was in the mountain talking to God. I want to show you something. He says, so Aaron said to them, he says, take off your rings of gold that is in your ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. Give me all your jewelry because this person that was leading us, we can't even find him. And so he says here, he says, so all the people took off their rings of gold and then their ears and they gave them to Aaron. Verse 4, it says, and he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it uh, with a graving tool and made a what? Golden he made a golden cap. And they said, these are our what? He says, oh, Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, I want you to show, I want you to know something, man's inability to restore God's image will only end up in idolatry. The reason why I'm showing you this, the people of Israel, they, they were looking for something. Remember I told you last week that Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes that God has placed eternity in man's heart. We have a longing for something that this world cannot fulfill, but without the image of God, the spirit of God, our likeness, what we create is an idol. And so this is what the children of Israel did in that moment. They said, we're God and we can't find God. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create something. So what they created was a lie. And this is what man, this is what happens in our world today. If we're not allowing the spirit of God to lead our lives, we will create something to, 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 to be a form of fulfillment when it's really not. But it's really not. However... God loves us so much. He loved it. If, if you read the rest of the verse, he told Moses, he says, man, go down there and see what the people are doing. They being foolish right now. I want you to know that God's desire has always been to restore man. I'm teaching you something today. It's been God's desire to restore man. Because ever since the fall, we have been creating broken systems trying to make things work. I mean, all of these different things to place in our lives to fill a need, and it, it can only happen through God. Even in our fallen state, the Lord wants to restore his image back on his people. So we see this with the children of Israel. I want you to go to Exodus 19.3. This is the same. We see this again. And then it's, this is what it says here, it, it, uh, Exodus 19.3. It says, while Moses went to God, he says, the Lord called out of the mountain saying, he says, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel. He says, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you uh, on, on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. He is reminding them that he brought them out. Sometimes we have to remember that in every situation that we were in, when we didn't know how to get out. It was God that brought us out. He said, it was me that brought you out. He says, now, in verse 5, he says, now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, he says, you shall be, you shall be my treasure possession among what? All peoples. He says, for all the earth is mine. He says, and you shall be, uh, be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the people of Israel. I'm going to pause right there. So, so God tells, the chill, uh, tells Moses, he says, hey, even though they're in this fallen state, I love them so much 
that I, I'm going to create a covenant with them. And in this covenant that I create, if they follow this covenant, they'll be my people. I will restore to them. He says, and I will be with them. Presence. If you, if you uh, obey this covenant, my presence will come down and it will be with you. Yeah. And he says in, in verse 7, he says, so Moses called the elders of the people and, and set before them all of these words that the Lord had commanded. And verse 8 says this. All the people answered and said together, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's what they said. Sometimes we say, Lord, whatever you want, I'm going to do. This was the response. He says, if God's going to come to be with us, then all that he has spoken, we will do. It says, and Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord in verse 9. It says, and the Lord said to Moses, he says, behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud. Since you are here, if you're, since you, you're, wanting, you, you're willing to get in covenant with me, I'm, I'm willing to bring my presence back to you. He says, so he says to the people, he says, uh, I'm coming to you in the thick cloud that, that the people may hear, listen, when I speak to you and may also believe you forever. I'm coming in proximity to you that you may hear me again. And see, this was the original design of man because if we know anything about, G, about Genesis, Adam spoke to God directly. He heard the voice of the Lord. Because he bared his images and his likeness. But when we, the fall of man hindered that and it severed it. And God says, you know what, I love you. I want to, I want to bring you back. And this says in verse 10, and it says, and the Lord said to Moses, he says, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments. So we know that there was a covenant that was given. And we know this is as the Ten Commandments, the Mosaic Law. You can take that text down. And this is, you know, I'm going to read these to you. The first one says that you, they were not supposed to have another God before him. God says, I'm going to bring you my presence if you do this. If you make no idol gods, if you, if you don't take the Lord's name in vain, if you keep the Sabbath and make it holy, if you honor your father and mother. Oh, Jesus. I feel like we need to do a lot of teaching just on that one alone. If you honor your father and your mother, and he says, you shall... Also, don't murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness to your neighbors. And you shall not covet. Don't look at somebody else's stuff and want it so bad that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get it. God is saying this is what holiness looks like. He said that if you obey this, I will dwell among you. Listen, we know that Paul says that the law is spiritual. It is a spiritual thing. Even after all of this in, this in man's fallen state, he was unable to keep the law. All of this, God says, okay, I know that you ate this fruit, Adam, and I know that you doomed man, but I love my creation so much that I'm willing to create something to restore the image back onto man. So he gives the covenant, but mm, all it did was reveal man's sin nature. It just, Paul said, hey, all it did was show me that I'm sinful. Listen, God then says, you know what? I'm sending somebody. I'm sending somebody named Jesus to be the permanent cure for our fallen state. And he himself will bring and bear the image of God back to man. Listen, God so it is Jesus who sends the Holy Spirit into our lives so that, can, so that we can remain in his image and his likeness. It is through Jesus that the people of God can walk in his image and his likeness. That means that we can walk in his spirit and create the things that are ushered by his spirit. God, I'm listening to you. I'm being guided by you. I'm treating people the way that you want me to treat. And now everything that I create after that, now because I'm under your presence, I'm being led, now will resemble who you are in my life. But without the image of God, without the presence, you may be able to create, but what you will create will not stand. Image and likeness. Hallelujah. It is only Jesus 
who can repair the image. I thought about this, and I was just thinking as this, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if you were to draw something, you know, I, I thought about sometimes as, as a parent with, with children, sometimes they can put together a puzzle, but, you know, putting together a puzzle is, is more than just making the pieces fit. Right. And what happens is, you know, I remember, I hate to bring up COVID because COVID get on my last nerve, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. During COVID, my wife had this grand idea. She was like, babe, since we in the house, this was like COVID to where nobody was going anywhere. Pandemic, pandemic, pandemonium. And so she was like, I'm going to get a puzzle from Walmart. We're going to wipe it down. Don't act like y'all wouldn't wipe it down, y'all stuff. Like, y'all wiping it down? Yes, you us too. We're going to wipe it down. And we, as a family, are going to put together... I, no, I'll take that back. It was a thousand-piece puzzle. And I said, okay, it sounds good. Has anybody ever given you an idea? And it's just like, you know, that would be nice, bringing the family together. We all in the house can't go nowhere. It's just sounded good. Let me tell you, the moment that all of them puzzles came out of that box, we was in trouble. Because she, I was like, man, you didn't even get nothing that was like, it had a lot of grass in it. And if you have ever put a puzzle together with grass to match that, you, it's going to take a while. COVID was almost over when we finished that. <laughs> listen, listen, the reason why I'm bringing this up to you is because our children was helping us. Because, you, and, and sometimes they would come and, and, you know, we were all working on, you know, getting the outside. We was YouTubing the best way to put together a puzzle. <laughs> all right, put together one, see what, see what happened. And it was like, you need to put together the edges first, and then you build in. Y'all shaking your heads like y'all got a puzzle, a dictionary in your garage. Like, we knew that already. No, you didn't. And so, <laughs> and so we were putting together pieces, and I remember my children were coming to me, and they're like, Dad, I think this is a piece. I was like, no, that's a piece of the boat that's in the lake. What about this, Dad? Nah, 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 that, that's, that's part of the cabin that's in the corner. But they were, you see, this is exactly us and our, and our ability to create. Because they was putting together pieces, but they were out of alignment. And see, this is what happens. And what I had to do with my intellect being higher than theirs, I had to correct it. And see, this is what happens with us. We put together the puzzles and the pieces of our life because we can, we can manufacture a relationship just because we want to be in one. I can get me a man. I can get me a, a, a woman. I can do this. I can get me a house. But God's saying, I know what you got you built, but it ain't built right. It ain't built right. And so what happens is uh, we are trying to, uh, to, to operate in, our, in, in an image, but it's our image, and it's flawed. And Jesus comes in just like I did, and he's able to put the pieces of the puzzle exactly where they need to be. Why? Because the Bible says he sends the comforter, the Holy Spirit, which represents the presence of God, the image of God, to be in alignment of your life. To be in alignment so that I can walk in alignment so that I can really create and do everything that God is calling me to do. It is only Jesus that can repair that image. Listen, we were all flawed creating on our own. You don't believe me? Go 10 years and look at your closet. You wouldn't dare put some of that stuff on. When I look at high school, listen, I'm, y'all know I ain't big. I was wearing like a 36 waist. Air Forces that would just massively be huge, a XL shirt, and a long chain. I would never. But see, but now I have a new perspective on life. I'm giving you a basic principle, but I want you to see how it relates to man without the Spirit of God. You can put some stuff together, but it's never really going to last. It goes, you know, when it, it talk, it, it, this is basically a principle about someone building a house on a rock. Yes. 
I love how the scripture says he built it on sand and he, and he built it on this. But those that built their house on a rock, on Jesus, the rock that is higher than not, it is that rock that was able to stand. Because the winds and the waves are going to come. I'm, 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 but the thing that we have to understand, if we are going to bear the image of God, then we have to have the spirit of God. And in order to have the spirit of God, we must receive Jesus into our lives. You gotta have Jesus in your life. He's the key. So what does that tell us today? That although we have the ability to create minus the spirit, then the, the, the Lord told me, he says that we need to stay in tune with the spirit. Because even though you are saved and you are walking in this newness of life, we still have the ability to mute the spirit. You know how you change the channel every now and again? Like, mm, I think I like this picture a little bit better. So the Lord says that we must stay in tune with the spirit because it's the only way that we can bear his image. And listen, when I'm talking about this, this is to show genuine love. Genuine uh, kindness, genuine, the genuine attributes of God. We have, not only that comes with that, we have renewed wisdom and vision. I thought I had vision before. When God came into my life, he showed me some of my vision was actually division. Like, mm, you, you're really not walking according to what I have for you. Listen, my last text, go ahead and put that up. It's Colossians 3 and 8. He says, but now, this is what Paul is telling the children, uh, is telling uh, the people in Colossians. He says, but now you must put them all away. He says, anger, wrath, malice, sl slander. I've seen talk from your mouth. Go to the next verse. He says, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self. You've been saved. And he says, with, it, with its practices. Go ahead. And he says, and have, put, it said, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the what? Image of create after the image of the crea of its creator. So now he says, now that you have been saved, is if the spirit what it does, it renews our mind. This is what sanctification. When you get saved and you begin to allow God to make changes in your life, it renews your mind in the very things that you thought before. You don't you don't necessarily think, and it's continually building you back to the image of God, exactly where He created you to be, exactly the dominion that he wanted you to walk in. You were created in his image and likeness. Oh, Jesus. If it's not blessing you, it's blessing me. It is God's image by way of the spirit that renews us. It teaches us every day what a child of God is supposed to look like. If you're honest with yourself, you need to be reminded every now and again. You need to be reminded what it is to forgive. And that's what the Spirit of God will do. Jesus says that the comforter will come and it will lead and guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit ain't going to lie. If you're arrogant, it's going to tell you you're arrogant. If you're doubting, it's going to tell you that you're doubting. But that is the image of God speaking to you and saying, this is what you need in your life. When we created, God made us perfect without flaw. However, because of the sin of Adam, the Bible says, I believe it's in Genesis 5, Genesis 5, it says, when Adam began to have children, he says he bore them in his image. So we were fallen. And it is in this state, we will always fail to meet the mark required by God. Which means you could never reach your full potential. Our lives will always be longing for more. I want you to know that God loved you so much, hallelujah, that he made a way for you to live and to walk in this newness of life. Although you were born in sin, you can be born again. You can be born again. You can be born again. I remember the story of 
of Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. He says, how, how is it possible that a man is old, that how can he go back into his mother's womb? Jesus said to him, he says, that which is spirit is spirit, and that which is flesh is flesh. So when, when you make a decision to follow Jesus, you are being born again. And what you're saying is now I'm getting back to the way that you actually wanted me to live this life. This is the best life that you can live for your family. If you give your life to the Lord, you'll be a better husband. You'll be a better man. You'll be a better dad. You'll be a better friend. You'll be a better wife. Your life will be better. And I'm not talking about, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, things. I'm talking about a quality of life, peace in the spirit, joy in the spirit. All of these things will come. You won't uh, allow the world to put you in a trance or a certain situation. You will depend on God for your all and he will be your peace and he will be your strength. But the question today I want to ask you. Are you born again? Is it your desire to bear his image and his likeness? And if that's you today, I, wanna, I want you to come. If you're not saved, I'm going to pray anyways a general prayer. But if you're not saved today, I want you to come. Because we are blessed with gifts and talents. I, I, I look at the people that are, that are in the world And they haven't received the Lord as Savior. And I was like, man, all of these people are so gifted and talented. They're they're mine. They're able to create. But the thing is, they're creating all for the schemes of the world. If they just get in alignment with God, imagine how impactful that creativity will be if they bear his image. If that's you today, I want you to come. Don't be, you know, we're not here to uh, see what everybody else is doing. You know, because what we got to understand is that I got to answer to God just like you got to answer to God. And I can't answer for you because I don't know your story. God knows your heart. And today, you know, it's, it's a day for you to make a choice and say, you know what? I'm tired of doing this on my own. I need something new, refreshed in my life. Hallelujah. I need renewed vision. This joy that I have, the world is taking it away. But I needed joy. I need a peace, hallelujah, that only you can provide. And I'm telling you today that if you are here and you're not saved, come. Make the decision to just say, yes, I'm going to serve you. Hallelujah. If there is no one that is here, I'm going to pray anyways because we have people that are online. Hallelujah. 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 Those, Father, you know their hearts and their minds, God. You know where they are. Or those that are, that are watching by stream, if you want to receive Jesus into your heart, it is very simple. Confess, believe, and receive. Please repeat after me and say, Father, today I come to you as a sinner. Hallelujah. However, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. And today, Lord, I accept him into my heart to be Lord and to be Savior. I will live for him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to know that you have prayed that prayer that you are saved. But I want to pray for us that is here, that we are like that child that is trying to put together that puzzle. You're trying to make things happen because of your creativity, because of your mind, because of your intellect. I want to encourage you to release and to allow God to show you exactly what he wants for your life. Father, those that are here, God, you know where they are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, I pray, God, Lord, that you will touch their hearts in the name of Jesus. That they will depend on you. That they will seek you first.
in every single thing that they do. God, the things that seem in order, out of order in their life, God. Lord, I pray, God, that they will just release all to you and allow you to align, hallelujah, their life. Allow you to align. Hallelujah. No more murmuring and complaining, but just trust in you. Hallelujah with their lives. And Father, I thank you right now because I believe, Lord, that today makes a transition. Hallelujah. And those that are here today, Lord, I, this is a word that you have given me, God. And I just pray, Lord, hallelujah, that it, it does uh, not go out void, God, because that's not what your word does. I thank you, God, for the heart is changed, for the mind that has been changed, and for the soul that has been encouraged. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, as we leave this place and never from your presence, God, I ask, Lord, that you protect us. In Jesus' name. Lead and guide us, God. Lord, continue to show us all that you have for us. Lord, and help us to be examples. Help us to be lights in the earth for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I have a, something that I wanted to say. So tomorrow, after I announce this, we're going to leave. Tomorrow is, is we're having our prayer night here at 6. If you're free, I want you to be here. And I'm going to be honest, this is, you know, the people have been saying this for years. It's praying time. But it is imperative that we come together. Not, you know, not just you and your own time, but let us come together and pray for one another. So tomorrow at 6, please meet me out here for family prayer night. And we'll, we'll be continuing this once a month again for the rest of the year, every third Monday. We will have family prayer night. So with that being said, you are dismissed. You can hit the lights. Let me do me a favor. Hug somebody. Love somebody. Tell them that Jesus loves them.